In this video I want to show you a couple of different units of measurement that you may have not used in the past and I'll show you some of the one of the uh, benefits and drawbacks of uh, using each of them. So for the first example I want to sh show you how to use REM uh, unit of measurement, REM. So in here we just have a sample article tag with a header and some paragraph tag. Uh, maybe I'll add one more paragraph and here there's no CSS. Let's go and add that now. So what I want to do is target the article tag first and let's just add a border just so we can see it and I want to add some padding to it so let's go ahead and use one rem so by default the one rem equals to the document root uh, of the font size which in this case is 16 pixels so it, so if you pull up the calculator you can see here if we take uh, 1 times 16 you'll get 16 pixels of course so if we go into our HTML here if we let's say change the document root font size to something like 24 pixels you'll see this change everything gets a lot larger because now the document root is now 24 pixels so if we wanted to change our article uh, padding in here you could just do 2 so this will equal to so if we do the math here 48 pixels. So this will automatically be 48 pixels. And the reason why this is great is that you can control all the uh, unit that you use as REMs throughout your page just by changing the document root uh, font size. So let me show how that's actually really convenient for you. So let's go ahead and change this back to one. Let's change this to the default of 16. Let's go ahead and target the uh, H1 tag here. Let's give it a font size of let's say uh, let's go with three and let's target the h2 tag oops give us a font size of two okay and then let's do the paragraph font size of 1.5 just as an example. So now you see here we've we've used it in padding, we used it in font sizes. Uh, you can use it in margins as well. So let's change this margin. Uh, there we go. So the margins of this has changed. So all of this, this measurement is looking for this here. So this is really convenient way to size uh, different padding and font sizes throughout your website, but in a responsive website scenario. So let me show you exactly what that would look like. So let's say this is your desktop. Let's say we want to add a media query to change the document root here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we do at media screen and max width let's just do 60 m and in here what we want to change is target the html so when you're below 60 m so let's go ahead and do that now html in fact let me change this to 720 pixels to make it clear okay and let's change instead of having it be at 16 let's reduce it to 14 pixels here in the document root so now if i resize this viewport here you see how everything automatically gets reduced so now the padding is a little bit is less the font sizes are less the margins are less so automatically everything is more or less changes proportionally and you can continue doing that uh, reducing it as you get down to a narrower viewport so let's say we do 480 here, and maybe let's change this down to 13, let's do 12 pixels. So now we're at the desktop, we're at the, like a tablet maybe, and then we get down here to like a phone. So this is a really easy way to change your website, and everything will change proportionally. So your padding will change, and anywhere you use the REM uh, uh, unit of measurement, uh, that will change for you depending on the document root. So you could do the calculation here and figure out exactly what that is. So for instance, if you want to know what the font size of your H1 tag is at, uh, let's say, this pixel here, so you just do the math here. So let's just do 3 times 12, and we have 36. So that's that's so you know that's where you're at. So that way you'd be a little more predictable uh, in terms of sizing your fonts. Is that you you know you may know what the sizing should be in pixels, uh, but you may not know what that should be in rems. And so that's how you would just calculate that. So that's a, how to work with with rems. So it's relatively straightforward. So remember the sizes here are based on the document root of the HTML tag. So whatever the HTML font size here will affect the padding, will affect the margins, and it will also affect the font sizes. So anyway, use rems. So that's using 
RAM. So another example I want to show you, uh, before we continue actually, I did a search on for RAM on caniuse.com. As you can see, it's supported on all the major browsers. So you're good to go there. Uh, so feel free to use that uh, straight away. And another uh, unit of measurement I want to show you is called viewport units. So viewport units is kind of, it's pretty interesting how uh, it works and it has some specific use cases. I wouldn't say I would use it in every instance uh, of sizing the things like padding and font sizes, but I think in some scenarios it's really, uh, really cool. One thing just keep in mind is that in the, the IE11 and Edge 13, these are both Microsoft browsers, it has partial support in, in reference to uh, VMAX here. So as you can see, if you read here, it says partial support refers to uh, not supporting the v, uh, VMAX unit. So just because of that, I really do, I never even use VMAX just to avoid that conflict. I just go ahead and avoid using both of these and use just uh, viewport width and viewport height. And I'll show you exactly how that works right now. So the way I would use that is not really, I, I don't like to use it uh, in like scenarios where you have these large headlines and subheadings and paragraph tags. I usually like to use it for things like, um, like a title of a website, for instance. So let's just do an H1 tag here at the very top. And in here, let's just go ahead and put title of the website. Okay, and we give this a class. Just call it title for now. And in here, let's go ahead and target title. And what I just want to do is text align equals center, give it a color of green just so it stands out. So there's our title of the website. So now you can throw a font size in here and you could do that whole, you know, RAM thing. It you know would work out really well. But you know, it's you know it's a it's not a smooth transition uh, going from one to the other. So maybe you want it to be uh, where it just the size of that font is relative to the viewport. So the 100 percent of this viewport, that's the, the size of this font here. So the way you would use the um, V viewport width here. So let me show you exactly what that looks like. So we'll target the title here. Let's do font size. Now I'm just going to guess here. Let's just do one VW. See, what, that's pretty small. So that's one percent or one 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 over the one hundredth of the width of the viewport here. So let's go ahead and make that five. Perfect. So now if I change the width here, if you look at that title there, it changes automatically so that's really convenient way to size but the one drawback for that is that if you get you know too narrow it gets too small if you get too wide it just gets larger and larger and larger so that's one of the things to sort of keep in mind okay so that's just one of the drawbacks and that's where the v you know the v uh, max comes into play but just keep that in mind it's not uh, com fully compatible with the uh, internet explorer and edge browsers so just something to be aware of so you may want maybe not use it for maybe font sizes but maybe you could do it for things like a width so for instance if we had uh, let's go ahead and try that now let's give this a width of let's say 10 and we we'll give this a background just so we could see it blue and let's go ahead and center this well, let's see here. Let's change this to 25. I'm just kind of guessing here. I'm going to change that to color to white so we can see it. So let's say this is our new logo, for example. So if I change this, you see how that's changing as well. So that's kind of, you know, maybe if you have, let's say, an image in here, like a logo in here, you know, it'll just resize automatically for you in that container. And now let's go ahead and do that now. Place hold it. It's a terrific way to include some images in here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this example here. Go ahead and drop it into replace our title here. So imagine if this was, for instance, uh, like a logo. Uh, let me just change this to. One thing I want to do is have. See how this is 350 pixels wide by 100 pixels height. But if you look over here, we set this to a fixed width of the viewport being 25. So that's kind of overlapping. So we don't want that to happen. So one way we could tag that we could target all the images on our website let's do a max width of 100% and let's do a height of auto so what that's gonna do it's gonna make that image to the hundred percent of the container that it's in so that's gonna be a really convenient way to work with that so as you can see here as I change the the width of the the viewport here this is changing automatically for me as well. So it's a really cool way to size things like logos, for instance. So one thing you could do if it's getting, let's say, too large, because I could just keep going, it's just going to get larger and larger. So you can, for instance, overwrite the, um, the title here. Let's do like a max width. It's kind of a way to work around it. 
and let's just say the max width we really just want this to be 300 pixels that's the max we want it to go so here's here we go smaller and eventually let's see here yeah eventually it's going to stop so let me just look at this here let's use inspect element and we look at the h1 title here we see that this is going to be taking over and it's not going to get larger than 300. okay so let me show you just so you could see that more uh, let's see here make it even more obvious 150 pixels there we go it's not going to get larger than 150 pixels so that's a really convenient way to work with viewport. So now you can do the exact same thing with viewport with the VH. So now we're dealing with just the changing the width. Well, what if we wanted to, you know, change the height here, uh, rather the height of the of the uh, of our browser? So let's go ahead and do that now. So instead of let me just go ahead and remove that. And instead of VW, let's do VH. So this is a cool way. So if you're working, let's say uh, in a, a tablet that's in portrait or landscape mode, and you want to change the height or the width of the of the logo, you could do that here as well. So let's say, for instance, you're in landscape mode here, and you just kind of go up and down. And you see that's a really convenient. So this is a very specific use case scenario. Just sort of keep in mind that this is not you shouldn't use it. I probably wouldn't recommend that you use this in all scenarios, but I think in some cases where you have like a logo like this. You and you maybe you're dealing with where you want that logo to change its width or height as you change the uh, viewport this is a great way to do that